This is a updated video on the COVID-19 vaccine as it relates to those with arthritis. Our original video was posted at the end of December and over the last couple of months, new information as well as a new uh, vaccine has become available. And as we've promised, we've continued to update our information. Uh, as well on our website, there has been ongoing updates throughout the, over the last two months and feel free to check out information there as well. This video will review some of the information from the previous video, as well as some updates as well. So currently, which COVID-19 vaccines are available in Canada? So now there are three. There are the two that have been available for a number of weeks now. So there's the Pfizer vaccine, as well as the Moderna vaccine, both based on mRNA technology. Pfizer available for those 16 years old and older and Moderna 18 and older. And now recently approved by Health Canada is the AstraZeneca vaccine. Again, approved for those 18 years and older. These vaccines are all given similarly, so they all require two doses. The Pfizer vaccine is at least 21 days apart, but can be given um, uh, further apart than that. The Moderna vaccine at least 28 days apart and the AstraZeneca uh, two doses are anywhere from 4 to 12 weeks. How do these vaccines work? So the Pfizer Moderna vaccines which are mRNA and the AstraZeneca ones are DNA. First of all important to note they do not alter your genetic information so your own DNA will not change because of these vaccines. These vaccines are not live, so they do not have the coronavirus, COVID-19, in them. So there is no risk of getting COVID-19 from these vaccines. As well, they do not uh, contain any adjuvant material, which is concern for some individuals when, uh, when we speak to other vaccines. But these vaccines are fine. These vaccines work by providing your cells the recipe to make a small portion of the virus, specifically the spike protein that helps the virus enter the cells. And then your immune system learns to recognize this uh, portion of the virus to protect you. After the protein piece is made by your own body, the cells break down the instructions, the mRNA or the DNA, and gets rid of them. So the or origins of that vaccine will go away. Once triggered by this new protein piece though, your body makes antibodies that will help fight the real virus if you are ever infected. The way these two vaccines deliver the mRNA and DNA are a little bit different but ultimately end with the same result. Are these vaccines safe and effective? So in Canada, we're lucky. Canada is recognized around the world for high standards for vaccine review, approvals, and monitoring systems. And only vaccines that are considered safe and effective are approved for use. These vaccines were able to come to market much more quickly than usual. And this was due to the availability of funding for their development, broad interest, obviously, and participation in the studies, and prioritization or review for market authorization. All these steps normally take much longer. The actual time to study these medications themselves was not necessarily sped up though. How effective are these vaccines? So the Pfizer vaccine based on the original studies of 44,000 people was 95% effective in preventing COVID-19 measured one week after the second dose. And there's been more data coming out since then, which seems to back this up. And similarly with the Moderna vaccine, originally studied in 30,000 people, the vaccine was reported as 94% effective in preventing COVID-19 about two weeks after the second dose. Based on early results of studies for the AstraZeneca vaccine, for of 24,000 people, the vaccine was 70% effective in preventing COVID-19 as measured two weeks after the second dose. But of note, study participants who received a half dose followed by the standard dose actually ended up with a stronger response to the vaccine, that 90% effective, compared to those who received two standard doses, 60% effective. 
although we don't fully understand why this might be and our understanding there is still more research to understand it better. But perhaps as importantly, we have to understand and recognize that all these vaccines were found to be very effective to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death. So where the rate of getting vaccine or prevent or getting COVID-19 may be different, perhaps between the different uh, vaccines, they were all very effective to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death. And that's, I think, an important point. Possible side effects for these vaccines. So generally, they've all been considered mild and moderate, lasting only for a few days after the vaccine is injected, and more often than not experienced after the second injection rather than the first. Common side effects have included pain at the site of injection, body chills, muscle or joint aches, feeling tired, or possibly feeling feverish, which indicate really that the immune system is responding appropriately to the vaccine. Some patients have experienced more severe reactions than seen with others, such, uh, and these have been seen with uh, vaccines such as the flu vaccine, including mild fevers. Acetaminophen, Tylenol, or ibuprofen, Advil or naproxen, Aleve, may be used to help manage any of these side effects, typically taken after you receive the vaccine itself. As with all vaccines, there is a small chance of rare but serious side effects, most commonly allergic reactions, but even this, the reported rate specifically for one of the COVID-19 uh, vaccines was uh, approximately 0.001%, so very rare. And thus far, there'd be no major safety concerns identified uh, in Canada, and Health Canada will continue to monitor vaccine safety. So now, is the vaccine safe for patients with rheumatic diseases? So experts agree that these vaccines can be used safely in patients with rheumatic disease like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, and others. And this includes those receiving medications that influence the immune system. Health Canada has stated that the vaccine should not be offered to populations excluded in clinical trials, including those with autoimmune disorders, unless a risk assessment deems that the benefits outweigh the risks. A small number of patients with autoimmune disorders were included in the Pfizer trial, but no data is currently available that's been released yet. One. The CDC, so Centers for Disease Control in the United States, has recommended that persons with autoimmune conditions who do not have contraindications to vaccination may receive uh, the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. The American College of Rheumatology has recommended that patients with autoimmune disorders, patients with rheumatic diseases, should be prioritized for vaccination due to potential high risk for hospitalization and worse outcomes compared to other people of the same age and sex. And certainly the Canadian Rheumatology Association as well has uh, endorsed and um, supported those with rheumatic disease to receive uh, COVID-19 vaccination. It's known that the vaccine response in general may not be as strong or last as long in patients on immunomodulating therapies, things like methotrexate, leflunomide, some more biologics, and it's possible this is the same for COVID-19 vaccines, although we don't know that for sure yet. But while that speaks to how well the vaccine works, again, there are no concerns at this point to suggest these vaccines are not safe for those with rheumatic disease or on medications for the rheumatic disease. Will COVID-19 vaccines interact with therapies used to treat rheumatic diseases? So some disease-modifying therapies, so methotrexate, rituximab, higher doses of prednisone, have been shown to decrease the immune response to other vaccines. And it's possible this may be true for COVID-19 vaccines as well. If you are on rituximab, it's probably a good idea to discuss optimal timing of vaccine administration with your rheumatologist. As for the other medications, this may be a discussion with your rheumatologist as well to see if you need to hold those medications or whether you should just continue on, as it may also have to do with uh, how active your uh, rheumatic disease is. Again, 
It bears repeating, there is no data suggesting the vaccines are not safe for those with rheumatic diseases or on our medications. And as we said, your rheumatologist may recommend holding one or more of your disease-modifying therapies around the time that you receive the vaccine. And that's why a conversation is very important. Why is immunization important? It is the single most effective means of protecting yourself from COVID-19 and will help ensure our most vulnerable and at-risk populations are protected as well. The vaccine will also reduce the strain on our healthcare system to allow elective surgeries and other postponed services, including the ability to see your rheumatologist in a timely way to continue. How soon will I be protected from COVID-19 if you receive the vaccine? So protection from severe disease occurs shortly after the first injection, within a week or so, but more complete and likely longer lived protection occurs about two weeks after the second dose. It may be that people who are protected by the vaccine can still carry the virus and transmit it to others, so recommendations for masking will be ongoing for now. Will you have to get the vaccine annually, kind of like the flu shot? Right now, we don't know the answer to that, as it's not clear how long immunity from natural infection getting, getting COVID-19 lasts. If you've had COVID-19, should you still get the vaccine? Well, people who've had previously, who have previously been infected with COVID-19 have been excluded from studies on the vaccine. There have been cases of reinfection for those who already had COVID-19. So it is suggested that this group of people still get vaccinated. Research with other diseases and other vaccines suggests the immunity tends to be stronger with the vaccine than natural immunity as well. And finally, who will be eligible for the vaccine first? So Alberta Health Services is prioritizing healthcare workers and this work is, is on its way to being completed over the coming weeks and months. Full rollout has been announced by fall 2021, but rollout for those 75 years and older has just begun uh, this past week. And if you look at the Alberta Health Services websites, uh, you can uh, go ahead and enroll if you are in that age group. We know at least 50 to 70% of people need to be vaccinated to achieve herd immunity where the natural patterns of spread will change. Again, the bottom line, the available vaccines are highly effective in preventing COVID-19 infection, and in particular, severe COVID-19 requiring hospitalization. Although there is no data proving their effectiveness in patients with rheumatic diseases, these vaccines can be used safely in patients with rheumatic diseases, as well as patients receiving drugs that influence the immune system. The information presented here is based on knowledge available at this moment in time, so last dated, last updated at the end of February 2021. Data about the effectiveness and safety of available vaccines will continuously be updated as often as we can here, but also check back regu regularly on our website as we will update information there as it becomes available.